From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. Normally for Congress, summer is a bit of a slow time in Washington, but this month, even when our elected officials are not in session, critical negotiations are underway on key legislation. National Congressman Jim Cooper is well aware of what is at stake and how it could possibly impact the rest of the term going all the way through the end of 2022. Congressman Cooper, thank you for being on the program today and live in studio. It's great to be with you, Pat, and in person. I'm hoping and praying COVID's finally over. <laughs> uh, Congressman, Congress has not one major infrastructure bill, but two under consideration. One is a pretty rare measure. It actually has bipartisan support. I think we see almost every week how our bridges, our roads, our power grids, everything about infrastructure is increasingly in need of great repair. Uh, can this trillion dollar bill that's before Congress, a bipartisan measure, get through both houses, even though it's going to need at least 60 votes in the Senate? Well, you ask, can it get through Congress? I think it has to get through Congress because our roads, bridges, like we've seen with the Memphis Bridge, absolutely deteriorating. We've got to get them back in good shape. And this is something that normally Democrats and Republicans not only completely agree on, but are enthusiastic about. So we need to get back to those days and keep our roads and bridges strong. Uh, what's in this bipartisan bill that will specifically, you mentioned, mentioned, that will specifically benefit Nashville? Well, tons of stuff. Really, any transportation budget in Tennessee is probably 60, 70 percent paid for by the federal government. So uh, if you care about any interstate, any bridge, and uh, this includes state roads, too, not just the federal interstates. And it might it's, also bring back a rail service to Nashville. Well, that would be great. You know, that's probably a stretch because not even Amtrak on the East Coast is really working very well. So we got a long way to go. But you ask yourself, why can Europe do it and we can't do it? There's so many things where America has given up ambition and given up hope, and that's wrong. One of the Republicans who says he's going to support this bipartisan infrastructure bill is the Senate leader, Mitch McConnell. He had said earlier that he's going to devote 100 percent of his time to defeat yeah. President Biden's legislative agenda. Can you trust him? Well, Mitch is going to do what's good for Mitch and what's good for Kentucky. But guess what? There's a big bridge between Kentucky and Cincinnati that needs fixing. So he's got to be for this bill. And he realizes, too, the key link between Memphis and Arkansas, you shut down I-40. You shut down a lot of the commerce in America. So we've really got to fix these things. Republicans wondered if they could trust the president a couple of weeks ago when this bipartisan bill was announced. The president said he might veto it unless another Democratic bill that's going to be passed under the uh, budget reconciliation process was also passed. Did the president misspeak and why has he backtracked since he said that? Well, I think we need to cut every president some slack because he's got the toughest job in the world. And there are people pushing him. Some people want earth, moon, and stars in every bill. Other people don't want much of anything. And he's got to find some sort of sweet spot compromise in between. And Joe Biden is a pro. He's been doing this for a long time. He knows how to find that sweet spot. And I appreciate him reaching out to people in both parties to try to get a compromise. And actually, Mitch McConnell didn't for come forward with this compromise. It's more of the Mitt Romney wing of the party. Ten or of so of those guys came forward to supply the needed votes to get from 50 votes to 60 votes, which you have to have in the Senate. This reconciliation process is also, I think, the way the American Rescue Plan was passed by Congress. Uh, but there are limits on that. It can't be any, it has to be something budget related, and it can only be used a couple times. In fact, isn't the, if they pass it, isn't this the last time that Congress can use it, the Democrats can use it this session? It probably is, although that's up to the Senate parliamentarian. And I hate terms like reconciliation because that's when Congress actually fights the most. And reconciliation <laughs> implies peacemaking. <laughs> but what it means is that both houses have to pass a budget, which is a good and necessary thing. And then if you pass a budget, then you get to use a lower a number of folks to, to pass something that implements that budget. But it doesn't apply to all legislation, only budget-related legislation. This Democrat bill is a little bit of different kind of infrastructure measure. It's not so much bricks and mortars, but human infrastructure for things like education, child care, health care. Uh, the Democrat bill is still not exactly sure what the size is going to be, or more importantly, how it's going to be paid for. Senator Bernie Sanders is talking about a bill as large as $6 trillion. Uh, you're a fiscal hawk, at least you used to be. Could you pass? A, could you support a bill that big? Well, we have to realize first we're still in the COVID pandemic period, and this is a national emergency unlike anything we've seen in a hundred years, and it's going to be tough to make sure we all emerge safely from that because there's still so many businesses and individuals who are hurt by that. Second, we've got to realize that. One of President Trump's priorities was an infrastructure bill, but he never got organized enough to do it. The third thing we need to realize is there are things like broadband that didn't used to exist, 
certainly was never considered infrastructure, but today if you're in rural Tennessee or anywhere and you don't have good broadband service, you can't go to school, you can't run your business, you can't keep in touch with the world. So the definition of infrastructure is changing and broadening. Uh, whether it's pandemic times or not, Congress is also facing at the end of this month another federal debt ceiling limit. Uh, we've seen this many times before. What should be or what can be the strategy to make sure the country doesn't begin to default on its debts at the end of July? Well, you're exactly right. We cannot default because the credit of the United States is the most important thing really in the world because people trust our treasury bonds. Now, this is a sort of gotcha vote. We're the only nation in the world that has a vote after the fact, after you promise to spend the money, like whether you should go ahead and raise the debt ceiling. The key vote is whether you should spend the money and whether it's worthwhile spending. This gotcha vote at the end about whether you should raise the de debt ceiling to acknowledge what you've already promised to do, that's kind of a, a nonsensical vote. Uh, the Democrats have a very narrow majority. They're 50-50 in the Senate. I think there's a swing of four votes in the House. Uh, Democrats have always been described over the time as not being an organized political party. Uh, is it possible, given the veto power now that almost an individual congressman and particularly an individual Democratic senator has, is it possible to get party unity on these, on these bills? Well, it's got to be not only possible, uh, Joe Biden has to help make it happen. And that's his nature to get along. He's known how to do that in the Senate for 40 years. He's uh, by nature an agreeable, fair-minded person. He's a decent person. He's not super controversial. And I think that sort of approach helps heal uh, wounds and helps bring people together. So I'm very proud of Joe Biden for continuing to be the good man that he's always been. And do you agree with what I'm sure you see and read these articles that I do coming out of Washington? If Congress doesn't pass these infrastructure bills and some of the other bills that are pending up there as well, they won't be able to get anything done before the midterm elections because the election midterm elections are going to start to dominate at least the thought process in both houses of Congress. You're exactly, Pat. You know politics better than anyone. This is the window of opportunity. We've got to get these big bills passed now, and we can do that. We must do that. And really, these are not controversial bills if you look at the substance because everybody in America is for good roads and bridges. These are not Democratic roads or Republican roads. These are American roads. Congressman Jim Cooper is our guest on Inside Politics. Back to continue our conversation with the Congressman after you watch these messages.